so panel uh, for this opportunity so i would like to um, make a very vast topic a little bit concise and i'll try to uh, bring it as bite sized portions as far as possible so visual impairment has been described in so many words and so many numbers as uh, how much of visual acuity the child has but this is not possible when you are dealing with uh, very small children in older children yes but very small children like this child whom the mother tells that she is not looking at the face even though social smile has developed the child is not uh, looking at the mother's face so we need to intervene early in this children and we need to diagnose a lot of visual behaviors to do this and before jumping into the visual impairment we need to do a complete examination to rule out that no treatable causes have been left out so most often when we see very small children who cannot read and uh, they don't uh, the mother feels that the child is not seeing properly there is a chance that many of the um, uh, many of the relatives tell that let the child become older and they they will read at that time so that a uh, tendency has to be rubbed off completely and we need to intervene and assess them quite early and congenital cataract and all the causes of treatable uh, blindness have already been discussed so after that we need to treat the visual impairment after all the treatable causes have been treated so we need an individualized approach so there is a lack of uh, E, uh, of uniformity in all these assessment programs so there is a little bit of vagueness the cvi scotland group has come with a four step process in which first we evaluate second thing we assess the functional vision and step 3 is creating an individualized plan and step 4 is monitoring so why is the evaluation process so important that is because vision is just not a number it is not visual acuity it is a multifaceted phenomenon as has been already described in the previous talks that the tree of vision so we have the brain and the many aspects of the brain which deals with the visual behaviors and these visual behaviors have to be assessed in the child the mri imaging and the clinical reports will help us to diagnose this better and which areas of the brain are involved more and so with all these things in mind considering the visual acuity the contrast and uh, accommodative disorders we have to keep everything in mind while dealing with such children and we go in for a functional visual assessment wherein we see what the child can actually see rather than just listing what the child cannot see so we need to find out the child's abilities and how the child works which field of vision the child is utilizing and we need to uh, know how big the images that has to be presented to the child for the, the child to see properly what should be the color of the images that should be presented or color of the toys that should be given to the child so that the child can connect and how contrast sensitivity is affecting the child's visual development we need to look into all these matters whether or not movement helps in uh, communicating with the child better and whether movement or no movement is better in utilizing uh these three steps that is the child has to see reach out to the object and then understand what this object is for so when with this behavior in mind we create an individualized education plan and before putting this into action we need to create an environment for the child so that the child who is visually impaired is uh learning or actually seeing and learning what they are doing the basic things we have to keep in mind is the room should be devoid of visual clutter the lighting conditions need to be optimum and the functional vision what the child sees has to be utilized to the maximum the child's visual field the color contrast sensitivity everything has to be taken into account and with this we also need to consider the age of the child if it's a young child we need to see the stage of development the family priorities what type of skills that the child already has and how we can build upon it if it's a older child we need to take into account the curriculum of the child so that we can help them learn we need to utilize the existing capacity to the maximum we need to introduce low vision aids appropriately and where in needed and not in play in every situation and a multidisciplinary approach is of utmost importance especially when we deal with children with multiple disabilities not just vision they have lot of other disabilities we need a multidisciplinary approach and last but not the least certification of disability takes the child through a long way in the society because that is very important for them to move forward uh, smoothly 
Monitoring is key to success in such children. We need to continuously communicate with the parents and the teachers. We need to review the techniques that are being used by the uh, caretakers for developing their visual ability and redefining and learn the learning techniques frequently so that the child can improve better as and when he develops. So with these techniques and monitoring, we can lead the child to a journey where he can see the rising sun in such situations rather than the setting sun. So I hope I could give a concise picture or outline of it. Thank you.